The, the difference between those two years, if it's, if it's a presidential cycle versus a regular cycle, there's about an 88% correlation. That should give you some idea of how, how meaningful that 94% was. And, and, and so I, did, and I went through and did that. And then I did the same thing with the ballots cast as a percentage of total population, as, uh, ballots cast as a percentage of Arizona population. And a couple of things I want to highlight since I'm running out of time. The population of Arizona has gone up by about 1% per year in the past decade. The number of people voting per year has gone up by about 7% per year. Now that may not seem like a big deal, but if you had $100,000 and you invested it at 1% after a decade, you would have $111,000. Not bad. But if you had $100,000 and you invested it at 7% for a decade, you'd have $195,000. So it's like, wait a second. How is it that you have 95,000 versus 11,000? So when you look at the differential growth rates, that's how meaningful it is, that this has been occurring going back a decade, that it's almost like a little creep. They were, you know, somebody was maybe cheating a little bit somewhere, and then they needed to cheat a little bit more, and then they needed to cheat a little, a little bit more. And the reason why I say this is, you know, being in the financial markets my whole career, Sarbanes-Oxley, remember that? Everybody remember Worldcom, Worldcom and Enron? They had to sign, the, the CFO and the CEO have to sign the financials, the 10K and 10Q, which is enforced since the 33 and 1934 Securities Act. Guess who was exempted from that act? Counties and states. Maybe they should be not exempted anymore. If you're gonna sign something when billions of dollars are on the line, we should believe in the data. We have the CEOs get clawed back. We get the CFOs jail time. So if you cheat, there should be repercussions. And the laws are on the books for this. You know, all we have to do is, here, I'll give you an example. If you're a CEO of a company and it's worth $20 billion and there's a fraud internally and somebody steals a billion, if you don't prosecute them and you don't uncover it and investigate it, you're violating your fiduciary responsibility, you're going to get fired, you're going to get sued, and the investors are going to take you through the ringer. But for some reason in politics, that doesn't happen, it, which, is, which is, is mind-boggling because this country's worth $100 trillion. This election is about controlling $100 trillion of wealth in the United States is very serious business. And so this is one of the reasons, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of wrapping it up here because I know you asked me to cut it short. Mr. So, Bitten, can, can we like do 60 seconds? 60 I, seconds. I think there, 60 Mr. seconds. Giuliani may have a question okay. for it. So the population of Arizona has gone up by 40% since 2000. The number of voters in 1998 in Arizona was 1.1 million. It's 3.2 million today. So it's like triple, but the population is up 40%. Something's off. Thank you, sir. Mayor Giuliani. If you could just tell us in your um, in the simplest way possible as an expert, what is your opinion as to the validity of the numbers that were certified today by the Secretary of State and the governor about this election? If I was an executive at a publicly traded company, I would never sign that because I risk jail time and having all my money taken from me in lawsuits. So to answer your question, I would never ever have certified. I'd rather resign than have certified those results. So your, your professional opinion is that the numbers are fraudulent? I believe they're fraudulent based on the data. And my sister asked me a simple question this morning. She goes, how sure are you? And my sister's a pretty stubborn person like me. And I said, I'd be willing to put my life on it. I'm that sure about the analysis, assuming that the data that I got from the state and everything else was accurate. So, you know, if you give me all inaccurate data from everywhere, then, you know, that's my only caveat. And could you tell us your professional background, please? I'm a portfolio manager. I have my, uh, I have my, I have my CFA since I was 23. I got my MBA from Kellogg. Uh, in, in organizational design and strategy. I'm working on a, um, a financial engineering degree at the moment. I like math for fun. I believe we math is the that. language of the universe. <laughs> well, thank, so. thank you very much. Okay. Very helpful. Um,